we've had uh, the Home Affairs Department coming out and saying, well, these are isolated incidents. Contracts to businesses on Nauru, businesses who have since been accused of bribery. Federal police said they briefed then Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton. They are clear that the meeting took place. Are you saying the meeting did or didn't take place? I don't have any record of it uh, in my office. I don't have any recollection of uh, having been briefed in relation to it. The politics seemed simple. Another apparent case of bad management by the former coalition government and in particular by the man who is now the leader of the federal opposition. Yesterday, the Albanese government ordered an inquiry into the integrity of contracts written by the Home Affairs Department in relation to Australia's offshore processing centres on Manus Island and Nauru. That inquiry is now underway, but the background to it is as important for what it says about the Home Affairs bureaucracy as it might be about politics and ministerial responsibility. And at a time when contracting out, Governments getting value for money and the capabilities of the public service are all subjects of hot debate. The long history of questions about contracts to provide services to offshore processing go to the heart of these issues. Michael Pizzullo is without doubt one of the most powerful and respected bureaucrats in Canberra in the post 9-11 world, where much that goes on has been seen first and foremost through a national security lens. He has worked for both sides of politics. In estimates hearings in May, he was asked about allegations that his department was paying millions of dollars to a company to deliver services on Nauru, while the AFP was at the same time investigating a man associated with the company for foreign bribery. The department was paying this individual millions of dollars. And I guess what I want to understand is why was that the case? Was there no process in place to stop such payments from being uh, provided? It depends on whether the uh, charges in question uh, had any relationship or bearing on the ability of the Commonwealth to procure um, relevant services. We're just going to, this goes, when does this go back to? In other words, if the criminal charges didn't directly relate to the contract at hand or affect the department's ability to provide services, it didn't really count. To summarise this particular case as reported in the Nine Media, the department had signed a new contract with one of the Radiance group of companies to provide accommodation at one site on Nauru, for which it ultimately received $9.3 million in taxpayers' funds. But a man associated with that company was arrested and charged a month later with paying more than $100,000 in bribes to two Nauruan officials. But it was hardly the first controversy. Whatever the problems within the department, even critics acknowledge it is difficult to get anyone to deliver services like the ones Australia needs, and that corruption almost goes with the territory in such remote locations. It's not a surprise to anyone who's, who's watched the Pacific closely over, over the past few decades that um, corruption is rampant in places like Papua New Guinea and Nauru. And that should have been something that was considered up front before we lurched down this path to, uh, to offshoring our responsibilities. Senator Nick McKim is the Greens' immigration spokesman. OK, so behind me here is the Lombrum Detention Centre on Manus Island. It is the ultimate contracting out exercise done deliberately so that politicians and senior bureaucrats in Australia could, um, could have a hands-off approach to this and ultimately uh, have a good chance of avoiding responsibility for their actions. The reputational risks associated with being involved with offshore detention in its darkest days led some of Australia's largest companies, including Transfield Holdings, later known as Broad Spectrum, to make the decision not to tender for future contracts. This helped pave the way for some little-known companies to step into the brink, including a company called Paladin Holdings, which was awarded a contract without tender in mid-2017. At one stage, Paladin infamously listed its head office as a beach shack on Kangaroo Island. That contract would eventually run until November 2019, and Paladin would be paid more than half a billion dollars to provide garrison services on Manus Island. Questions about how the offshore processing centres have been run have been the subject of repeated critical audit office findings, three since 2016. We have a pattern in Peter Dutton's Department of Home Affairs of non-competitive processes. Contracts that start off worth hundreds of millions, then worth billions. Labor MP Julian Hill is the chair of the powerful parliamentary Joint Public Accounts and Audit Committee. 
He argues that Home Affairs' record on contracts is not just questionable in relation to offshore detention. He clashed repeatedly with Michael Pizzullo in a committee hearing earlier this year about the department's contract for aerial surveillance aircraft. By the expiry of this latest contract, if uh, contract variation, if it runs full term, mm. the contract worth about $2.6 billion will not have been competitively tendered for 21 years. Mm. Is that acceptable? No. When you're a monopoly provider to a government that's got an outsourced capability, you're always going to have a circumstance where you've got a single provider and a department that's reliant on it. The inquiry to be led by retired bureaucrat Dennis Richardson will now investigate the department's record of contracts in offshore processing. But for some critics, the case remains for a much broader investigation. Offshore detention is one of the darkest and bloodiest chapters in Australia's national story and we are never going to be able to write the conclusion of it and make sure it doesn't happen again until we have a Royal Commission. <laughs>